Hey guys, I pray you're doing well. Um, I just wanted to get on here and since today is Wednesday, read out of the book The Great Disappearance by Dr. David Jeremiah. We are on chapter 10 and it is entitled The Rapture. So, how exciting. But, you know, we all know that the rapture could happen at any time now. You know, and I know everyone's talking about January 11th. And I kind of stand with Brother Tom on Watchman River. I do believe that something could very well happen tomorrow. Um, everybody has been seeing 111 or 1111. And so we definitely know that something could happen tomorrow. As a matter of fact, as I was talking about yesterday, tomorrow the International Court of Justice will be having a hearing and listening to accusations that are given by Saudi Arabia, not Saudi Arabia, I'm sorry, South Africa, accusing Israel of committing genocide, which of course is ludicrous. And if they're gonna try to charge Israel, then they need to charge Hamas. Just saying. I mean, what they did was Horrible, ungodly, evil, demonic, but yet there's not been any repercussions, but yet they want to call Israel out on this and say they are committing genocide. When Israel, of all nations, should know what genocide is because of what happened to them during the Holocaust. It's just ludicrous. And demonic. Sorry, Geralt's over here petting me. He wants pets. Ah, fine. Fine. But, um, you know, just keep Israel in prayer. But we don't need to just pray for Israel and the Jews for their salvation, that they will come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, as their Messiah. But we need to pray for all of the Middle East, you know, and it's it's being reported that Muslims are coming to Christ, and I praise God for that. It's being reported that they are getting dreams and visions of Jesus. And um, so we just need to pray for them because God doesn't desire any man to perish. You know, hell was not created for mankind. It was created for Satan and the fallen angels. It was not create it for for humanity but when a person refuses to acknowledge Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and believe in what he did on the cross and that he died for their sins on the cross and that he rose again on the third day when they refuse to believe in that that amazing sacrifice that Jesus Provide it for us. He became the blood atonement, the sacrificial lamb, the lamb without blemish. And he died on the cross and bore our sins on that cross so we could be forgiven of those sins, past, present, and future. Those are the ones that will go to hell, is the ones that refuse to accept the gift. Of Jesus Christ and why he did on that cross it's a scary thought it's a scary thought you know and the sad thing is there's so many people who are going to church who profess to be a Christian but yet on judgment day they will hear depart from me I know you not you doer of iniquity why? Because they had a form of godliness, but they denied the power thereof. They played church. They played people. Made people believe that they were a Christian. That they followed Jesus Christ. That they believed in him. That they placed their faith in him. The completed work he did on the cross. And they played themselves believing that they were okay but still their life 
was there was no change in their life and they didn't they did not turn to the cross they did not repent which means to turn around they did not and the only one they were not fooling was God you can go to church till you're blue in the face you can read your Bible until you're blue in the face but unless you have placed your faith in Jesus Christ if you have believed in what he did on the cross believe in Jesus Christ and you will be saved but if you haven't and you don't believe you're going to hell that might sound harsh but it's the truth there is no other God no other man can save you there's only one name by which we can be saved and that is the name of Jesus Christ Allah Gandhi Buddha why are you biting my shirt good sir sorry Muhammad none of these can save you and I know people Muslims are gonna get offended but I would rather offend someone into heaven than offend someone not offend them and them go to hell and I'm I can't change you I can't change your mind only God can but you have to be open and receptive to that but anyways um, let's go ahead and get into chapter 10 the rapture captain William Schaffner vanished without a trace he was a pilot in the United States Air Force engaged in an official exchange with the Royal Air Force on September 8th 1970 he was flying a BAC lightning over the North Sea his call sign was Foxtrot 94 Suddenly, an unidentified object was caught on radar, and Schaffner pursued it. He reported it as glowing in a golden light. The object was later said to be another aircraft, but it eluded Schaffner, who flew at a high speed toward the object. And then he, well, he simply vanished. Not just from the radar, the man simply disappeared about a month later, his plane was found intact on the bottom of the sea, but the cockpit was closed with the canopy and ejector seat still in place. There was no sign of Captain Schaffner or his remains. For decades, people have tried to solve the mystery of the vanished airman, and Foxtrot 94 was spawned countless theories. Recently, another investigation suggests that Schaffner had manually opened the canopy and jumped out in midair. And when his plane hit the water, the pressure closed the canopy. Maybe, but the case of the vanished Air Force pilot has puzzled military and civilian investigators for decades. Imagine, then, how officials will try to explain the spontaneous disappearance of millions or even billions of people. How will the government explain it? What conspiracy theories will grip the popular imagination? What panic will haunt the hearts of those left on earth? That's the rapture. The portraits of the rapture. Some people question using the word because the term rapture is not in the Bible. Yes, but 1 Thessalonians 4.17 says we will be caught up. The Greek word Paul used was harpazo. When the New Testament was rendered into Latin, the translators used the word raptura, which means to catch up or snatch up. From this, we get our word rapture. You probably seldom think about Greek terms, but this is one you should understand. Harpazo is found 13 times in the New Testament, and it has multiple shades of meaning. Each help us understand the nature of the rapture event. In some instances, the word means to carry off by force. At the rapture, the devil and his cohorts may all in their power may do all in their power to keep Christians here on earth. 
but the Lord Jesus will overpower them, delivering them by the omnipotent, omnipotent, sorry, power of His command, as if carrying us off by supreme might. The word can also mean to claim for oneself eagerly. At the end of this present age of grace, our blessed Savior will come to claim us as His very own. A third meaning of the word is to snatch at a out or away speedily. This emphasizes the sudden nature of the rapture. In a split second, the Lord will call all believers to himself to share in his glory. Not one will remain behind. The fourth meaning of the word is the most definitive. It means to rescue from the danger of destruction. In his letter to the Corinthians, Paul described the nature of the rapture as in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, 1 Corinthians 15, 52. Mark Hitchcock explained it like this. The events of the rapture will happen in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. The Greek word for moment is autonomous, from which we get our English word atom. Autonomous refers to something that is invisible, that cannot be divided. When Paul wrote these words, no one would imagine splitting the autonomous. Today we would translate this in an instant, in a split second, or in a flash. The second phrase that describes the duration of the rapture is in the twinkling of an eye. The Greek word for twinkling is rapai. This might refer to the time it takes for light to reflect in the human eye. Others believe it refers to the time it takes to blink your eye in the blink of an eye. Blinking is the quickest movement in the human body. People everywhere understand what in the blink of an eye means. Hitchcock summarized by saying the rapture will occur in a split second. Suddenly, corpses all over the world will be raised and reunited with perfect spirits, and living believers everywhere will be caught up to heaven and transformed body, soul, and spirit. The rapture will shock the world. It will change everything. In a nanosecond, the Lord will call all believers to himself to share in his glory. We will simply vanish from the earth. No one who has confessed Christ as Lord will remain. The picture of the rapture. It is hard to imagine just what it will look like, but I read, I read a paragraph recently that created this vivid picture. Millions of people from all parts of the earth feel a tingling sensation pulsating throughout their bodies. They are all suddenly energized. Those with physical de deformities are healed. The blind suddenly see. Wrinkles disappear on the utterly as their youth is restored. As these people marvel at their physical transformation, they are lifted skyward. Those in buildings pass right through the ceiling and roof without a pain or damage. Their flesh and bones seem to de de dematerialize, defying all laws of physics and biology. As they travel heavenward, some of them see and greet those who have risen from their graves. After a brief mystical union, they all vanish from sight. The world will somehow have to come to grips with millions of missing Christians. The ensuing, ensuing outcry of sorrow, loss, and confusion will make the rapture a well-publicized event, dominating the media for weeks and weeks. I recall a deception, a depiction of the rapture in Hal Lindsey's book, The Late Great Planet Earth. There I was driving down the freeway, and all of a sudden the place went crazy. Cars going in all directions, and not one of them had a driver. I mean, it was wild. I think we've got an invasion from outer space. It was the last quarter of the championship game, and other, the other side was ahead. Our boys had the ball. We made a touchdown and tied it up. The crowd went crazy. Only one moment to go and they fumbled. Our quarterback recovered. He was about a yard from the goal when zap! No more quarterback. Completely gone just like that. It was puzzling. Very puzzling. I was teaching my course in the philosophy of religion when all of a sudden three of my students vanished. They were quite argumentative, always trying to prove their point from the Bible. 
no great loss to the class. However, I do find this disappearance very hard to explain. These images help us visualize what the rapture may be like. Through, though our imaginations aren't big enough to truly envision what the world will experience. Our hearts are big enough, however, to realize our Lord wants us to be with him. And every day we're more eager for his return. Isn't that the truth? The purpose of the rapture. But why will he come in this way and at this unspecified time? Let me suggest two reasons. First, the rapture will end the church age and trigger this, the stunning sequence of the events of the end times. According to Guinness's world records, the largest chain of dominoes so far constructed was at a Michigan school. It consisted of 100,000 dominoes, which took a week to assemble into elaborate patterns across the gym floor. One privileged student toppled the first piece and the chain reaction was unstoppable. Similarly, the sudden appearance of Jesus Christ in the sky for his children and their sudden disappearance from earth will trigger a non-stop chain of events lasting seven years and culminating in his second coming. Every year, more than a billion people turn in across, tune in across multiple TV networks to watch the ball drop in New York City's Times Square. Tens of thousands flood the streets of the Big Apple to watch the event live. What's interesting is that the ball itself is a symbolize of transition. From the moment the ball begins to descend the pole atop one Times Square, viewers know they're witnessing the end of the current year. They are still experiencing that year, but they know something new is coming. When the ball finally finishes its descent, the new year begins. The old one is gone and the new has come. In light manner, the rapture will be the catalyst, the divine spark that will signal the end of our current age and begin the prophetic countdown to the end of history as we know it. The other purpose of the rapture will be for God to deliver his children from earth before the seven year tribulation begins. What will happen during these seven years will eclipse every natural disaster in history. Jesus warned, there will be great tribulation such as not has been seen since the beginning of the world until the time, this time, no, nor ever shall be, Matthew twenty four twenty one. This period is described in vivid detail in Revelation 6 through 18. During this period, the world will experience pain and devastation like never before. But according to the scriptures, Jesus will fire, will first catch away all those who put their trust in him. He will do this before the tribulation begins. In Revelation 3.10, Jesus told the church in the ancient town of Philadelphia, Because you have kept my command to persevere, I will also keep you from the hour of trial, which will come upon the whole world. Here, then, is a summary of what happens. The Lord Jesus Christ will return from heaven, bringing the souls of those who have already died with him. The bodies of those dead saints will be resurrected and changed. And the body of those Christians who are still alive and remain at his coming will also be changed. When this happens, God is going to hover over this universe. And all who have accepted Jesus Christ as Savior, those who have been resurrected and those who have never died, are going to be snatched up, pulled right out of the population, su suctioned off the planet. It's going to happen instant instantly. No time to get ready. No prelude. No preliminaries. In his book, The King is Coming, Harold Will Willington provided an illustration I find especially helpful on this topic. A man is cleaning out his garage and discovers a small box filled with a mixture of tiny iron nails, wooden splinters, sawdust, and pieces of paper. Suppose he desires to save the nails. How could he quickly separate them from the wooden splinters? If a magnet was available, the task would be quite simple. He would simply position the magnet over the box. Immediately, all of those objects possessing the same physical nature would be caught up to meet the magnet in the air. When Christ appears, he will not only come, he will not come especially for black or white people, for Catholics or Protestants, for Jews or Gentiles, but those individuals who possess the same nature as himself. 
Those who know Christ share his nature and will be drawn to him, caught up by his magnetic, rapturous power, and then we will ever magnify our Savior. Amen. The rapture sequence, the return. The Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and the trumpet of God. 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 4.16 the resurrection and the dead in Christ will rise first. 1 Thessalonians 4.16 The rapture. Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. 1 Thessalonians 4.17 The redemption. And we shall not all sleep, but shall be chained. All, we shall all be changed. 1 Corinthians 15.51 The reunion. Those we who are then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. First Thessalonians four seventeen. All right, so that is the end of chapter ten. So you know that right there tells us we are not destined for God's wrath, and the great tribulation, the time of Jacob's trouble, is God's wrath being poured out on a godless society who wanted nothing to do with God. And so there's going to be 21 judgments. There's going to be the seven trumpets, or the seven seals, the seven trumpets, and the seven bowls of wrath. And each judgment will be worse than the next. You don't want to be here for that. There's gonna, this is going to be a time like no other time in history. The Bible tells that we have never seen a time like the time that is coming during the Great Tribulation. It is God's wrath. Right now, we're going through things, but it's not the Great Tribulation. This is... Mankind, this is the fall, this is the sin, this is Satan's domain, but this is not God's wrath. This is because the things that we go through is because of the fall of man and sin in the world through the fall of man. But here soon it's going to be God's wrath. Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins so you could be forgiven. You know, when we repent when we turn around from the destination that we were headed towards we were all headed towards hell until we realize that we are sinners and that we need a savior and we cannot save ourselves and jesus christ is that savior he came on and died on the cross for your sins he died he was buried and on the third day he rose again jesus paid a hefty hefty price for the remission of our sins so we could be forgiven and so many spit on it and say that they don't need forgiveness they don't need a savior but we are all sinners but now we're a sinner saved by grace you know Ephesians 2 8 9 tells us that you know salvation is a free gift and we receive it through faith and it's a gift from God so that none of us can boast. We can't earn it. We can't buy it. It's a free gift that God has given us. You know, so many want to say that they have to work for their salvation. But you don't work for your salvation. You know, yes, works are good. We should work. The Bible tells us, you know, Work, faith without works is dead. But that's not talking about for salvation. You know, but when, when we come to Christ, we want to work. We want to witness to people. We want to be an encouragement to others. We, we want to do what the Father would have us to do. And not all of us are going to have YouTube channels. Not all of us are going to be witnessing on Facebook you know, are living your life for Christ and letting your light so shine 
you know, cleaning the bathrooms at your church, working at a kitchen soup and feeding the homeless, going out and being encouragement to the elderly in the nursing home. Those are amazing things to do. But it does not lead to salvation. Salvation is only found through believing in Jesus Christ and the, His completed work on the cross. Not 99%, all 100%. You don't have to work for any of it. It's a gift. Freely offered. Jesus is coming very soon, whether you want to believe it or not. He is coming soon. We don't have long. I truly do not believe that. You know, and I know I said, you know, I really felt like last year was the year. But I mean, look how much we've already seen in 2024. We're here for a reason. And I know a lot of you all are tired. I know a lot of you all are going through heartache, grief, stress, mental, physical, spiritual, emotional, financial issues. Some of you have severe issues in your family. Some of your families are broken and divided. But place everything that is loading you down on Christ. You know, he tells us to pick up his yoke because his burden is easy. It's light. Let him carry your load. Trust in him and know that he cares for you intimately. If he didn't care, he wouldn't have died. He wouldn't have suffered the way he did. His death was painful. He hung on that cross, and I apologize. I said three hours in an earlier video. It was six hours. He hung on that cross for six hours in that excruciating pain. He had to lift himself up on his torn, open back muscle and bone exposed and had to lift himself up on that cross where his hands were pierced and he had to lift himself up just to be able to breathe and then when he came back down it, his back was scraped against that rugged splintered cross further opening his back up he could not breathe properly. He was in immense pain from his open wounds. He was thirsty. He was exhausted. I can't even begin to imagine the pain that he went through. But he did that. And he did that for you. And he did that for me. He was beaten beyond recognition. Beard plucked out. Thorn of crowns placed on his head. And they weren't just gently set on there. They were slammed down. He was mocked. He was ridiculed. He was stripped naked. The, ro the, the crucifixion was meant only for criminals. And it was not allowed to be used against Roman citizens. This is how bad this punishment was. It was only meant for the worst of the worst criminals. But yet Jesus, who was innocent, sinless, blameless, died this horrible death. But he did it. That was random. I am sorry about that. But he did it. I'm not going to let that stop me. He did that for you. And for me. So think about that. Think about that. But I love you all. And I'll talk to you all soon.
God bless you. And I'll probably read another chapter here in the next little bit. I'm going to get this one posted. And then we'll see how it's going. All right. God bless you all and love you all. Please know I'm praying for you. If you have any prayer requests, please put them in the comment section or email me. My email address is in the description box. There are other salvational scriptures in my description box. There is my, um, I have rapture kit information for the some of the, the major things that I bought in my rapture kit. The video that I did a couple days ago about, it's called, um, I think it was called Get Your um, Rapture Kits or Prepare Your Rapture Kits. I can't remember the, the exact title of the video, but it's on there and you'll see it. I've also got links to left behind notes if you if you're looking for a letter it has it's a couple links and it's got several different letters on there so um, I pray that you find these these useful also in the description box is a, a video about salvation from brother Chad on Watchmen 88 Watchmen on the wall 88 so um, you know Jesus is coming guys we gotta be about our father's business and we have got to maintain while we wait Believe me, I know it can be difficult, but we're going to make this through it together, and we're not giving up. We can't. We are at the finish line. We are at the finish line. But I love you all, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.